Hi, my name is Dr. Aisha Barron, and I am a featured woman for the November 2023 issue of the Bold Maven magazine. Can you share a little about what you do? So I am a board certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon. So I am tasked with the ability to transform lives. I often didn't say that I may not be saving a life by performing an actual like life-saving heart surgery or brain surgery, but I'm saving a life by drastically improving the quality of life for my patients, improving self-esteem, mental health, overall well-being, and making somebody feel good about themselves can be just as impactful. And so I do that either by cosmetic surgeries or reconstructive surgeries for breast cancer patients. And it's something that I really love to do. There's so much variety within plastic surgery and it, it's just an honor to take care of this particular type of patient. What schools did you attend? My educational history is that I went to undergraduate school at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia and I then went to complete medical school at Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee. So I'm a double HBCU attendee. I then completed my plastic surgery training at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. And now I am a practicing board certified plastic and reconstructive surgeon. Was this something you've always wanted to do? Plastic surgery was not something that I always wanted to do. I didn't realize that it was my passion until I was in medical school. For the longest, I thought I wanted to be an OBGYN and focus just on women's health care and do all things women. Um, but when I got to do my surgery rotations in medical school, the first day I was in the operating room, it was like a seven hour colorectal case for someone with um, an intestinal cancer and I absolutely loved it. I said, I have to be in the operating room as much as I can. And so I explored all surgical specialties and I was between initially plastic surgery and orthopedic surgery. But when I was on my orthopedic rotation, um, one of the surgeons asked me, you know, well, what, have you ever thought about being a plastic surgeon? And I was like, well, yes, I'm doing an away rotation next month. And he was like, I think you'd be a great plastic surgeon. And I was like, well, what makes you think that? And he said, just the way in which you handle the instruments, handle the tissues, you just have that finesse. And so I went on to do my rotations and absolutely loved it. I tried to give OBGYN a chance when that rotation came along, but it just didn't, um, it was no comparison to the experience that I got with plastic surgery. What does a busy day look like for you? A busy day for me uh, is typically in the office seeing a lot of patients. <laughs> it can range anywhere from 20 to 25 patients a day. Uh, myself and my um, PA normally tackle that task um, as well as my medical assistant, my staff, the receptionist and everything. It could be anywhere from just seeing new consultations, seeing post-op patients, doing Botox or fillers, also, you know, potentially even doing a small procedure in the office or really kind of encountering all the ups and downs that might potentially go with being a surgeon. A busy day in the operating room could be that I'm doing one long reconstructive case, um, like the deep flap. That's a procedure in which I take the abdominal tissue and transplant it up to the breast in order to reconstruct a breast in a patient with breast cancer. And so that could be an all day thing, still a busy day, still a very extensive operation, or it could be uh, a busy day for me where it's multiple cases is a maximum of three cases. I normally don't do anything longer than uh, three cases a day just because I need to be fresh for my patients um, and still be able to uphold safety. And then also I have a family to get home to. Why did you decide to step into private practice? I decided to step into private practice because I didn't want my earning potential to be capped. <laughs> I also decided to go into private practice because I wanted to be, you know, have some autonomy on the way in which my practice would be run. I didn't always own my own practice, but I really wanted to be able to be in charge of the plans for my patients without an administrator or something like that breathing down my throat or having like research requirements when it comes to an academic institution. So I just really wanted to be in charge. So <laughs> I guess that's why I went into private practice.
Have any unexpected challenges come up in ownership? Um, I feel like there's always an unexpected challenge that comes up with owning your own practice. You know, when it comes to managing employees and being, you know, a good leader for them, um, there's always a challenge. Someone may not like a decision that you make. You know, everybody always wants a raise. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I think it's, you know, there's challenges when someone is out sick and the whole team has to rally around to still serve our patients. Um, and, you know, really, it's, it's always a challenge for me, and I accept it, to set a good example for how patient care is going to be conducted within the office. As a surgeon, what is your perspective on body and beauty image? My perspective on body and beauty image as a surgeon is that it really is in the eye of the beholder or potentially in the hands of your surgeon. Uh, I think that, you know, when patients come in and they desire to have a body part altered, it's, you know, it should be done with the correct motivations. Um, and oftentimes I have to tell the patient no, in which I feel like they're not a good candidate for the procedure. They either need to lose additional weight in order to get um, desired results and also make sure that the uh, procedure is being performed safely. In regards to body and beauty image, what a patient sees in the mirror is really what's most important. I can see a beautiful result. Say if I've operated on a patient and their you know, result is fantastic, if for some reason they don't see it the same way, then I have to be attentive to that and really coach them through that. Um, for the same reason, you know, body and beauty image um, in the preoperative phase, if a patient sees a particular characteristics of, of themselves and does not like it, whether or not it's reasonable to operate or not, it's really my job to manage expectations on what a potential surgical outcome would or would not be. And so a lot of times that can end up with me saying, no, you know, you're not a good candidate for surgery or you don't need this operation. You know, so I do that quite often. And I think patients really appreciate that I'm candid and honest with them when it comes to what their outcomes could potentially be. And, you know, the fact that Yes, I can take your money, but sometimes, you know, I'd gladly walk away to prevent a patient having, uh, you know, being disappointed or having unrealistic expectations after surgery. At the end of the day, what brings you joy? Uh, at the end of the day, depending on what type of day it is, um, there could be a, diff a myriad of things that bring me joy. Um, at the end of an operation um, or operative day, what brings me joy is, a, you know, a great surgical result. Being able to have that instant gratification from seeing a surgery completed and my plan in implemented. Um, at the end of a clinic day, what brings me joy is really having patients walk out of the office being satisfied with my work and really feeling happy and confident about the choices they have made and entrusting me with their care. Uh, at the very, very end of the day, what brings me joy is going home to my kids. You know, really, I take a deep breath before I walk in the house because I know I'm going to get attacked. <laughs> but opening that door and hearing the mommy, mommy, mommy's home, that type of thing, um, I love it. I absolutely love it. And last question, how can our audience reach you? The Bold Maven audience can reach me on social media, either on Facebook at Breast Body Beauty, um, which is our practice webpage. And then also on Instagram, I am called the Breast N Body Doc. So that's breast, the letter N, Body Doc. On Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, which I think is no longer <laughs> is X or whatever it is. But uh, you could also reach us on our website, which is breastbodybeauty.com. To continue this conversation, you can read my full featured story on theboldmaven.com.